this video, we will show you how a citizen developer can use UiPath's process discovery, automation, and AI capabilities to rapidly create a basic automation, and how we can easily collaborate with a professional COE developer to develop a more robust and enterprise-grade automation. As a finance department lead here at AVC Corp, I've been using UiPath's process mining to learn a bit more about my team's processes. I've identified a few different activities in invoice processing, and I'd specifically like to double click into checking received invoices to see what the automation potential might be. I'm providing some simple inputs here to go ahead and simulate that automation potential. The automation potential is 98%. I'm pretty excited about this, so I'm going to send it to Automation Hub to centrally document and govern this idea through its process into being developed. This is my idea from Process Mining in Automation Hub. We can see that it's been reviewed and is in the qualification process from the COE. They've decided it's a simple enough automation idea that I should be able to develop it myself and have assigned it to me as the citizen developer. Given my high automation potential, I wanna learn a little bit more about the details of this activity. I've launched an assisted task mining project and asked a few members of my team to capture a specific instance of entering and checking invoice information into SAP. Each team member completes the process a bit differently. So I've merged all their captures together to get a comprehensive picture of the task and exported it into a PDD that can go into Automation Hub. It should be noted that this export could also be into an automation workflow template that could go directly into Studio. Given that this idea has already been approved for a citizen developer to start creating, I've started a Studio Web project. My project leverages UI automation to connect to SAP and start automating by inputting my credentials securely from an orchestrator asset. Once I've done this, I recognize that all my invoices live in a Google Drive, so I'll need to leverage integration services to be able to connect easily and securely to my Google Drive to pick up all of those documents. Creating this connection took just a few minutes and allowed me to seamlessly integrate into an additional application through my automation. Once the connection is built, I can use a simple Studio Web activity to loop through each file and folder in the identified Google Drive to pick up my invoices. Once those documents are picked up, they will need to be digitized and have data extracted from them. As a citizen developer, I don't have too much experience building my own ML models, but I do know that UiPath's Forms AI, within our document understanding product, has some predefined models, as well as the ability to create a model by just training a couple documents. I've uploaded a few examples of invoices and labeled my relevant fields with hotkeys. This will then create an extractor for those kinds of documents as they're read in by the automation or robot. My automation is ready now, and I'm going to go ahead and run it on my automation cloud robot. We can see here that the project was built live, and in the live stream, we see the robot complete each step in digitizing and extracting data directly into SAP. I can follow along easily as the automation populates green checkboxes as it completes each step. As a citizen developer, I was able to identify a bottleneck, gather details around a task, run an automation, and run it on a serverless robot. This wasn't just any automation, but one that had a custom ML model and a no-code API integration. Now that I've created my automation, I'm going to submit this back to the COE team for review and further collaboration via Automation Hub. As the COE lead and solution architect of ABC company, I've received the suggestion for automation for checking the invoice from our citizen developer. I can check the code here and I can actually open it in uh, Studio Web. Now I can go through the automation, see what our citizen developer has built, but I've already done this. So what I'm going to do is to share this with one of our RPA developers to further extend enrich and make this automation more resilient so that it can be shared with the entire uh, COE. I'm going to search for the name of our RPA developer and simply click save. I am now logged in with my RPA developer account. As an RPA developer, I can open this project and I can further enhance it in Studio Web. 
We're going to use the contextual option for opening in Studio Desktop. After analyzing the workflow, we have identified two opportunities for improvement. The two sections where we use UI automation to log in to SAP NetWeaver and the other section where we also use UI automation to do the expense report in, uh, in SAP NetWeaver can actually be extracted as a reusable component. For that, we're going to use the extract to library feature from Studio. We're going to start by extracting each of the workflows one by one. We're going to use extract as workflow. We're going to give it a meaningful name and hit create. We're going to do the same for the second component and then we're going to use extract library. We are now in a library type of project called ABC reusable components.sap. This library was created after extracting the reusable components from the original project. We have our two SAP login reusable components and create report. Both of these are using UI automation. And our goal here would be to make sure that these reusable components execute flawlessly 100% of the time. These reusable components may actually be reused across multiple projects in the future by both citizen developers and RPA developers. So one way to do that is, for example, to check for application state. By checking for application state, you actually check for existing UI elements that are present after something happens on the screen. In our case, after we perform UI automation to log in to SAP, we check if certain UI elements are still present on the screen. Another usual best practice when building reusable components is to harden the selectors. You can do that by editing the target for each individual activity, which gets you into the selection screen where you can actually perform edits to your strict selectors or fuzzy selectors, depending on the need. In this case, I've already checked all of the selectors and made the necessary changes, and these are as reliable as they can be. Now let's take a brief look at the other usable component, our create report component. This is the component that will be used to actually input the data uh, while creating the invoice in SAP NetWeaver. Now we had to do a few changes here in order to accommodate reusability for the future activity. We had to identify the reusable sections and parameterize them. So for example, when using this future to be activity, the user would pass a vendor ID, would pass an invoice state, and so on and so forth. So we had to make sure that this will be visible as an input parameter when this reusable component will become an activity. To actually publish this and before publishing as an activity, we should also make sure that it has the proper design. And why we to do that is to use activity layout where we can define for each individual input parameter, how will this input parameter look like? Great. Now, before looking at how this activity will be reused inside a project by RPA developers and citizen developers, we need to continue our RPA developer exercise. One other way to further improve this library right here is to add test cases. Now, test cases are very important as part of the end-to-end -end development lifecycle. They ensure that your automations don't break before they run. You can include them as part of pipelines so that you can check for application state changes or you can che check for functional changes. And we've added three test cases that will help us with that. Our first example is a test case for the login section where we execute the SAP login sequence and then we check if the elements that we expect to be present on the screen are still present on the screen. Our second test case simply checks if the credentials that we need to actually log in into SAP NetWeaver are still present in Orchestrator. For that, we're going to use get credential to fetch the information from Orchestrator and then we're going to verify if the credential is present and if it contains a value. 
Now, before publishing this to our GitHub repository, we should verify that the tests actually uh, do what we expect them to do. We're going to use Test Explorer for that, and we're going to run all tests, and we expect these tests to pass before we actually check in the code. Great, since all tests ran, then we are ready to actually publish this reusable library. We've published our reusable library to Orchestrator, and we also checked in the code. Now, these two actions have two effects. One is we can set up a pipeline within automation ops that will help us run those test cases on a schedule or whenever a commit is being made. The second, publishing to Orchestrator, will help us to share these reusable components as activities. Let's first start looking at how to set up a pipeline. We go to automation ops, we check pipelines, we search for our GitHub repository, you may have one or more, and then you can choose your uh, project. In our case, it's our SAP reusable component. After some time passes, each of these executions will clone the repository, will build the library for you, will run the workflow analyzer rules, run the tests, and if anything fails during these steps, you will be notified. This is an important part of a CI CD process. We are now back in studio and we are ready to use the reusable library that we've just published to Orchestrator. This has been added as a dependency to the current project, which essentially exposes two new activities that we can directly use. The two reusable components are login to SAP and create report. You can see that the actual workflow has increasingly simplified by extracting these UI automation sequences into reusable components. And although we've hardened and strengthened and made these reusable components resilient, we can actually do much more. Before going ahead and publishing this to our center of excellence and share it with the broader group, there is one more thing we can do to further enhance this automation. We've added a global handler here. Now this global handler does one important thing. When an exception occurs because the targeted system, in this case SAP NetWeaver, decides to show different application warnings, different applications notifications, which are unexpected and weren't caught by our test cases, we can use computer vision to actually detect these scenarios and self-heal from them. Now we've created a global exception handler, which in its implementation calls a different workflow named confirm warning. Now this confirm warning does exactly that. It checks what happened using computer vision and it attempts to restore state. Now, before closing today's demo, we come back to Studio Web, where citizen developers who build workflows using UI automations can now also benefit from the reusable components that we've just built. Remember, those reusable components were published to Orchestrator. By doing that, you expose them to Studio Web users as well. So what I can do, I can take a workflow similar to the one that we've built initially with our citizen developer, search for the reusable component that we've just published, like login to SAP, we add it to our workflow, and we simply remove the old sequence of events. By reusing this activity, we make sure that we use something that is vetted by our center of excellence, and that was hardened and made more resilient by our RPA developers. Mm -hmm.